Hey guys, welcome to another Let's Chat Aqua Live. Welcome to everyone that is currently in the chat room. Hello everybody. And for those that are just joining in after the live stream, make sure you subscribe if you're new and hit that notification button so you know when these things are coming on and you can ask me questions or whatever and hang out with us basically and just talk about aquarium stuff. So today we're basically going to hit the planet stuff and uh, just hang out and talk a little. I was already talking to CMP, CMPI82 and uh, congrats on his uh, new CO2 system. He got the uh, 40, 45 gallon, uh, what, uh, 45 gram, I'm sorry, Insta 40, 45 gram canister, CO2 canister setup thing. Um, and he, he got a good deal on it. So it's really cool. So he went in and he's telling me he went in just to buy two uh, tanks to set up for uh, quarantine. And he ended up buying a lot more, like $200 worth of stuff, which... I think we all could relate to, right? So anyway, let's go to the chat see who's in. Hi, Susan. Glad to see you on board today. I hope you guys. Ha I hope you're having a wonderful Friday because it's a wonderful Friday than me. You can start the weekend. That means making more videos for you guys. So yeah, uh, we got Keith Boardley. Hey, how you doing, Keith? Good to see you in the chat. Pollery and then Swaroop. All right, I don't know if that's a made-up name or if that's a real name. Let me know, because that's, that's a really cool made-up name. Anna, or real name. Swaroop. Swaroop. Uh, Kevo's Frist and Reptile Room in the house, too. Patty's Aqua World. Hello. Famous Jones. Hey, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the chat. The quarantine was for $325 order of fish I had coming into. What in the world are you buying, CMPI? Three hundred twenty-five dollars worth of fish. Nice. What? Can, how big of a tank are you stocking? That's crazy. Unless you're buying one huge big fish that costs three hundred twenty-five dollars. Yeah. So, so anyways, we can start. Uh, you know, let's start with the basic questions. How many of you guys in the chat or you know or watching have a planet tank? And how many of you guys don't have a planet tank and is trying to get into it but too afraid to? And how many of you guys just don't have plan tanks because you're not interested? If you're not interested, well, then I, it's not much I could say about that. But, you know, plan tanks are really, really fun and really, really good in, to get into. So, yeah. So I hope you guys are all... Oh, I'm, is my frame jaggy? Uh-oh. Oh, CMPI has uh, multi-tank syndrome, unfortunately. Am I still jaggy? Sorry, this laptop is really old. I need to get a new laptop. Or I, I got a stream from uh, my office upstairs from that one. Still jaggy there, Susan? Let me know. That would suck. That would suck. So anyways, good news is that uh, my office tank... Uh, has finally finished cycling, so now I get fish. So hopefully they would stop bugging me about when we're going to get fish. Unfortunately, that's uh, the gist of the nature. Getting fish. Always, everyone wants to get fish, fish right away. Yeah, wait till you cycle your tanks, buddy. I also put in uh, eighty-five dollars worth uh, of a plant order with uh, H2O Aqua. No, H. H2O plants. I don't know why I said aqua. Oh, because AC Aqua just popped in the chat. Hey, AC Aqua. Hello, hello. Yeah, I got your call out. Well, I got your message. I haven't actually seen your video of the call out, so now I got to eat lemons. Thanks, buddy. You're a real friend. Real friends don't make friends eat lemons, but at least this is for a good cause, so. Hey, anyone else getting the jagginess on, on my thing, or is that just Susan? Because uh, I gotta figure out what's causing the jagginess. I thought I closed everything down. That would cause jagginess. Hey, HC Aqua, House Hawaii. I think everyone who here has multi tank syndrome. So, you know, I also had a good question in one of my videos about um, they want to get into solar tanks, but they don't know how to, you know, they're like, how do you keep it from getting all messy when you're jabbing and, you know, when you, you're vacuuming the, like, you know, the substrate? I'm like, well, you don't vacuum 
the subtree, especially if it's sand cap on soil, you want to just siphon the top and kind of like uh, graze the top. Okay, so don't go jabbing it in. You shouldn't be jabbing it in anyways. That sounds really dirty, but you shouldn't be jabbing your, your vacuum into the gravel in the first place. Go about go about uh, half an inch. This could sound really dirty if you just came in the middle of this, so I'm just going to just go with it. All right, so don't go jabbing it in. Okay, you just got to just take your time, just do about maybe half an inch into it, and then... You know, just take your time. Um, the reason why you don't want to jab it all the way in because you don't want to kill off all of the good, you know, beneficial bacteria that's already settling in your substrate. You got to remember that's part of your filtration system. Okay, so just use the tip or whatever. But anyways, um, if you jab it all in too much, you kill all the uh, bacteria in in the substrate, and that's part of your filtration system. If you mess that up. It's going to kind of throw your canister or your filter or whatever into out of whack, and and then you're going to get a sudden, you know, balance shift in in your aquarium. So don't 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 do that. Don't jab um, your vacuum into your gravel. Just go about half an inch and just get all the detritus out, and then just keep going that that way. Okay, so don't jab it in. So if you're using sand cap on soil, all you're going to do is just uh, siphon the top. You know, just go graze the top of the sand. Uh, I was just doing that uh, at the office tank because I planted it and kept it with sand. And uh, all I'm doing was grazing the top, you know, and just kind of like moving the water movement around a little and just kick up any um, detritus or anything. It'll just go right into the vacuum, and that's how you get rid of it. Now, if you're capping with, like, say, gravel or Echo Complete or Stratum or, or anything like that, then, yeah, you could, you're supposed to put at least a cap about an inch over the soil. So again, jab it down about a quarter of an inch and just get up, pick up that detritus. That's all you need to do. You got to remember, some leaving some detritus or nasty stuff on the substrate is okay because your substrate is part of your filtration system. So keep in mind on that. Uh, see what we, what's going on in the chat here. Everyone's talking about MTS. So yes, everyone has MTS. MTS, MTS. Uh, wow, you guys are talking up a bunch. Uh, let's see. Keith Bordley, I have two partially planted, and I'm going to be swapping the 29 for 40 breeder, which I have, of which I want to be heavily planted. I love 40 breeders. I love 20 longs, love 40 breeders, because it's just the height of the tank. Uh, it's perfect for the lighting for uh, for the plants. Unfortunately, for a 20-gallon long, it's very, you know, the height is... Uh, short so you don't get much plant grow you can't grow your plants out too much that's why i can't wait to go to my 40 gallon b and kick start that with the uh the dutch style thing i was going to do with it i think i might do this that weekend i have to build the shelf or or whatever and then uh, and then i'll do that rim that and just set it up i got ordered a piece of glass though so yeah it is jaggy i don't know how to fix that then um this is this laptop Thought I closed everything down that stopped the jagginess. Um, oh, you know what? It might be this. Let's quit that. It takes a lot of memory. So hopefully clean some of that up here. Um, I'm curious to know when the okay. So famous Joan asks. I'm curious to know when the best time to use liquid fertilizers when you fer when you first start a tank with planted substrate. Use it right away. You don't have to wait. You can go ahead and um, start fertilizing uh, your tank. Even if you have a uh, uh, planted substrate. I don't know what kind of substrate you're talking about. If it's something like Echo Complete or something, yeah. Start uh, dosing your liquid fertilizers now so that that type of substrate can start taking the nutrients from the water column and store it into, the, into their substrate, into the, the clay or, or whatever gravel it is. If it's something like... Um, uh, if it's something like aqua soil or, or soil, then uh, yeah, you still you still could uh, dose your aquaticum with liquid fertilizer. You do it right away. It's plain and simple. You do it right away. There's nothing wrong with that. Just watch out for algae bloom if you're doing something like ADA aqua soil or uh, or just regular soil itself because that's already leaching a lot when you first plant it or first set up the tank. It's going to leach a lot of the um, 
nutrients into the water. Um, so it might cause an algae bloom. You can wait if you're using fertilizer or ADA Aquasol. If anything like Echo Complete, Stratum, or uh, C Chem Fluorite, I can never remember just fluoride. I have to say C Chem Fluorite. Stuff like that. Anything that's clay based that says it has um, nutrients in it, which doesn't, just has the micronutrients in it, then you want to start uh, dosing liquid fertilizers right away. <laughs> My daughter had just seen my video and now she wants to... Your daughter wants to do what? Fish tanks or wants to do the lemon challenge? Hey, Heather. Welcome to the chat. I'm going through the chat right now, guys. I, I, unfortunately, I'm, obviously, you guys are talking really, really a lot today, so... Which is good. Cloudy today. I have over 10 tanks. I think that counts. Yeah. If you have over 10 tanks, I think that's MTS. It's okay. You know, I'm going to start a club. Start a, a you know, a, a group. To, uh, you know, deal with our MTS addiction. It's important. We want to have you guys all stand up in the front of the room and say, Hi, I'm MTS addict. Ah, good night, AC. See you later. AC left us. Lame. Now, I don't have tor torrents going on this computer here. It's upstairs. Not that I, not that I encourage bit torrents. Yeah, it can't be the bit rate because I have it hooked up. I have it hardwired into uh, my uh, router. So it's this computer here or this laptop. I'm planning to use the Carbon C rhizomat under the substrate too. I don't know what that is. I got to take a look at what a rhizomat is. Hey, John Bear. Welcome to the chat. What well, has has the brown algae problem? Is the sand bottom tank when it first starting out? Did you get rid of it? Is the question? Our famous John, you have carb C fluoride substrate. Yeah, start dosing right away. What's up, Philly man, Pete? Yeah, you can start growing uh, plants like crypts right away in old sand. Uh, again, dosha water column. Okay, um, crypts though is root root feeders, so you might want to put in you know a couple of tabs, root tabs, for the crypts. They're mostly root feeders, um, so make sure you do that. Um, put root tabs. You now people keep asking me like, well, you don't need you no know, substrate that's you know made for plants. You can use regular plain sand or regular plain. Um, uh, you know, gravel to grow plants, just feed them. And you feed them by using root taps and make sure you keep dosing your water column. Whether or not you have um, enriched substrate, you still should be dosing your water column. What do you think about low-tech tanks with no CO2? I love them. It just grows so damn slow. You got to remember, I started this as a low... Well, when I replanted, redid this tank... I started this as a low tech with no CO2. What it didn't have this high bright light on it. I had, I went and bought a uh, what do you call it? Um, oh God, a beams work, and it was really low light. I didn't bother with CO2. Uh, I just used soil in this tank, and that's it. Didn't even bother uh, dosing the water column either. And you just sat there. It grew. I mean, it it sustained itself, but for me, sustaining is not enough. You know, I need growth. I need to grow these plants. I need to push it hard or something. You know, otherwise, I you know, what do we do? You don't sit here. You can't trim it every week. My last tank, when it was a Dutch style tank, I was trimming it every week. I was doing something with it. Um, if that's your style. If, if low, ta if your tank, if the style of your tank is that you don't want to maintain it every single week, and you just want to let it go, let it grow, and then trim it maybe once every few months. Uh, do water changes, then low tech is your thing. Okay, just for me, I just got so bored of it. I, I started just pushing, you see, switch out the back out the light, and, and then I used that, um, that uh, Fluval CO2G 20G system in here, which was fine, it worked okay, but I wanted to push the growth of the plant, so I went back to pressurize CO2 in this tank. 
you know, with TO2 running right now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, since I did that, I probably got about half an inch on my labilias already. I've already got three or four strands out of my um, cryptochlorines, uh, about half an inch off of my uh, pearl weed. So uh, that was, I installed this, what, about a week ago? The uh, pressurized CO2 system has switched back to the lights. So I haven't started dosing the water column, but I'm going to start doing that too. Uh, and uh, just get get the growth out of there. Yeah, my, my grow out tank, which someone asked me about, what's a grow out tank? Well, so if I could show it and why do I use it, is is bare right now because I don't have any more plants to move over to the grow out tank. Uh, so lame. Yeah, I know. So that's why I, I love love low tech plants uh, tanks. It works great. Just right now, not for me. Maybe a couple other tanks I will set up as low tech, so I don't have to maintain it that much. But I think it's all about maintenance, about what what you prefer. You know, how much time you want to put into your tank. <laughs> But uh, thanks for asking that question, Greg. It says if you don't set up an upload limit, it can mess up your stream. It could be. At, le at least is my video coming okay? I don't look where I'm going to be. Ah, Max Headroom thing going on if any of you guys are old enough to remember that. That's cool. Good to see you going dwarf baby tears in the tank. In the low-tech tank. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. Uh, what's really the rules about wattage when it comes to low tech? I only have easy grow plants such as newest angle job for and I'm planning to add some in the 20 gallon. How many watts? Okay, you can't go. Okay, here's the thing. You can't go by wattage. That's an old, old way of trying to figure things out. Uh, back in when I, you know, I, back when I was in the hobby, before I got out of it, we were going by wattage uh, per gallon. And that worked mainly for People who use compact for fluorescent lighting. Okay, that tank has compact fluorescent lighting. Uh, my grow tank has compact fluorescent lighting. And uh, my 120 that's out of commission right now is all set up with compact fluorescence. So back then we were going by uh, wattage per gallon. It doesn't work like that anymore. Okay, especially with uh, the LED techs. Uh, out there as well as T5 you shouldn't be going by wattage by per gallon because if you go with T5 and measure by, that by watt bar per gallon against a compact fluorescent versus watt per gallon you're going to start burning out your plants because T5 high output puts out a lot more intense lighting than compact fluorescence at the same wattage okay so it doesn't work that way nowadays it's all about par value you know, I'm, I have a whole video that I'm going to be doing on this, explaining that whole thing. But um, it's measured by par value. Basically, if you watch Corey's videos, and um, you see him having that, that par meter, and then he measures the lighting from you know the substrate, that's what he's doing. He's measuring the par of the light. This light par from there to the substrate should be hitting around 45, 46 pars. If I remember correctly uh, and that's considered high lighting uh, based on the substrate higher lighting if it's higher in, towards the tank okay as the light goes to the water it start losing intensity goes through the um, cover loses intensity so anything that gets in the way um, it starts losing intensity it starts losing power rating okay so if you're going to talk about low-tech tank simply put you get a regular beams work light that's low tech. That's enough light to grow your Nubius, to grow your Java Fern, to grow your swords, your 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 common swords, um, and, and you're good to go with that. So if you're going to a 20 gallon, I would suggest for low light tank either go with those Beamworks or any of those made in China ones. Uh, the if you want something more more streamlined mainline, I go with uh, the uh, Phoenix Stingray. Uh, it's a really sweet light, very thin, and I, I just love the whole uh, makeup of the Phoenix um, Stingrays. Uh, Fluval has a bunch of good lights for low light pl planet tanks. Uh, yeah, I would just go that route. Uh, you'll save you electricity using LEDs. Um, if you're going to go low light, don't bother with 
uh, T5 high output, so that's not low light. That's when you want to push the growth. Don't go metal highlights. Uh, you could, if you can find an old compact fluorescent kit, use those. Um, just watch what kind of compact fluorescent. You can get it from, you can make a, just regular compact fluorescent bulb to use your lighting. Just get daylight bulbs. That'll work for low light if you want to, you know, a simple, you know, ghetto makeup, you know. You could do that too. So, uh, yeah. Um, if you're going low light, really, if just go for anything that's like, I guess, LED. Beams work. LED lights, uh, those other made in China ones will work for low light tanks. Uh, that's the cheapest way to go. Okay, you can go to Home Depot and get um, the bulbs, CF bulbs. Make sure they're daylight, 65K, somewhere around there. And uh, you'll be good to go for low lighting. Actually, those bulbs, though, um, can actually get really, really bright, too. So uh, you just got to watch it. So, again, don't go by wattage. That's that's out of date. It doesn't work anymore. I mean, we go by par, and even that's not com uh, completely accurate. Because there's a whole thing about par, and I'll have to explain it in the video because it's a long explanation. Hey, Cichlid Guru NYC. Good to see you. Philly Man Pete says, hello, Susan. Oh, never mind. He's talking to Susan. Oh, she wants to do the lemon? Should just give her a lemon. Tell her to bite into it. <laughs> you should have had her do it, too, AC. Anyways, uh, have a good night. I think he's already out. Nice. Orange shrimp from Flip Aquatics. I need to uh, order some. I think I'm going to order some cherry shrimp for the uh, office tank from Flip Aquatics. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> nice. CO2 systems are always great for planet tanks. Talk to you later, Patty. Hope you have a good night. Simon Limox, welcome to the chat. Any suggestion with dealing hair algae? I can't seem to get it stopped growing. Um, I had hair algae in this tank when it was a Dutch tank, and I solved it by balancing my tank with pumping more CO2, fixing my CO2 problem because it wasn't being pumped in the tank very well. So I fixed it by pumping CO2, which in turn pushed the plants to grow more. So it took up more in nutrients than the algae could, could take up. So the algae disappeared. Now, I don't know what your setup is for her algae, but you might have to take it out by hand. Use a toothbrush and just do the trilling thing. Go away sooner or later. I don't think hydrogen peroxide actually works on hair algae. You could try that. Uh, you could get young SAE. They'll eat that. Young SAE. Um, some shrimps will eat it too, but I'm not sure. I got a mono shrimp. They say a mono shrimps eat hair algae, but I never got that. Never had that problem there. Or I never had my monos actually seen them eat hair algae. So, Nucrin lights. Yeah, that's the other nights I was talking about. Nucrin lights work, not nitro nights. <laughs> So, oh, you have a review on them? Well, check out that review, guys, if you want to have some cheap lights that will grow low light plants. That's good, yeah. Those cheap lights, like I said, will work for low light plants. If you're not trying to go for the high pushing, you know, pushing high intensity and try to push those uh, plants to grow, then you don't need to go that expensive. Hit with the night crews, hit the uh, beam works, and they'll work. Yeah, I know beam works make their, I heard they make the high lighting output stuff, but. I have never tried it. I should. I should try it. You're saying they go over 100 par for how high of a tank? Okay, so JS Aquatic stuff is saying that Beamworks makes uh, super high lighting output stuff and they go over 100 par. So let me know which, uh, which model that is. I gotta check it out. How do lumens compare to par? It doesn't. They're two different separate things. Lumens, you can't compare lumens to pars. It doesn't work that way. It, they're two separate things. I'll, I'll, do, I'll have to do a video on that very soon. I've been sitting on it because I've been trying to research it more. Lumen pars and um, Kelvin rating. Very different things. Related, but different. Uh, let me. Well, let me go back up here. While you guys are asking questions, yay, I like this. Let's 
session for hair allergy. I recently bought shredded shell. Okay. Uh, Susan says, do you have a filter for a planet tank without fish? Yeah. I do it just because uh, I have it. Even though I don't really need to have a filter for a planet tank without fish. That 40 gallon tank has a has no fish in it. It's just plants. And it has a filter going. And uh, I just have it because it was out of habit. I was going to put fish in it, but I never did. Uh, but the good thing is I have a cycle media filter to use to jumpstart other tanks. So Same with the Ui Gumi tank that I have up there. It's just running. <laughs> There's actually no fish. But uh, I just do it out of habit. You don't need to if you're just going to have a tank with plants. Uh, CMPI82, quick question about your 20 gallon and my 45 GCO2 system. Can you use different size CO2 cartridges like I can with your f use 45 with your 20 juice? No. Uh, 40 that 45 G means 45 gram um, cartridges canisters. Okay, my 20 G means 20 G. Well, 16 to 20 G uh, canisters, so they're different sizes. So your regulator on your Insta 45 G won't fit uh, 20 G or 16 G gram cartridges. Okay, so they're different sizes. They they won't fit. To just let you know before you go out and buy <laughs> sizes that won't fit. Okay, I already answered the question about lumens and pars. I'm using oh Greg Sims is using those fluorescent bulbs. Okay, that's fine. And a USA LED light. That's fine. Yeah, that should be more enough to grow low lighted plants. I'll see if we have, Hey, Lumpy Dog in the house. How you doing, buddy? Okay, uh, whoa. Sorry, just checking to see if you guys have any other questions. I have Koval LED lights. This is from Famous Jones. Lights seem strong enough to grow low to mid plants, but coverage area is limited by my 455 gal. He okay. Famous Jones brings up another point: is uh, coverage of light. Um, if you guys ever seen my video on my 40 gallon breeder planted tank, uh, we're using soil. Um, there is actually two Fluvol 2.0s on there. I only need one if I'm growing plants all the way in the middle, but I have plants in the back and the front. So in order to get the coverage, I needed a second light. It wasn't because of the intensity, not enough intensity, it was because of the coverage. Okay, so if you have a tank that big and your coverage of your light's that big, it's not going to hit the plants right here. Okay, hopefully you guys can kind of imagine what I'm writing here without me writing, without me diagramming it out. But that that's sometimes the point of why... I rose the light on this tank here when I was doing the dust style. If it wasn't sitting on these risers, I would have, I, I wasn't hitting enough intensity on plants in the back of the tank without moving the light backwards. If I move the light backwards, then I'm losing the intensity of light hitting the plants in the front. So I would have to move it forward. If I move it forward, I'm not going to hit the back. So one you know, solution is to raise the light so that that cone gets bigger and hits the substrate level more. The problem with that is now I'm losing par rating. Okay, so when you lift, if par, if you have a light here and your substrate here, your par rating hitting the substrate is 40, uh, which is about somewhere around low, uh, medium to high lighting, and you raise this, the light, that par is going to, you're going to lose par on that, and that 40 rating is going to become maybe 35, 30, and then, you know, it's less intensity light. So that, there's a lot of kind of, I guess, science that goes behind it trying to figure out like the par rating and why par rating right now your hobby is important because that's what is probably the more accurate way, the most accurate way we have right now to be able to measure the intensity of light hitting a substrate. And why, why are we measuring by substrate? Because everyone who wants high light wants to grow those carpeting plants, all right? Uh, so HC, a lot of people have problems with uh, baby tier HCs, baby tier HCs. Baby dwarf tears. Um, so a, light, a lot of times lighting has to do a lot with that. 
Sometimes I think it's mostly parameters with the tank as well too. I think he really likes soft water. But that that's just from my and there's no scientific fact behind that. It's just something I observed. Um Jason USCG, I started a hev and heavily planted a new dirted 55 two days ago. Ammonia is high. Should I leave it alone? Do big water changes or dose prime? Um, you might get a you might ammonia burn your plants depending on how what kind of plants is in there. Uh, but you should be okay. Just let it alone. In a few weeks, in about a week, it will start going away. The ammonia will start dissipating. You can do water changes. You do a couple of 50. Did you do any water changes or did you just flood the tank? I always suggest you flood the tank, drain it, and flood it about a couple more times and drain it just to get all the crap out of from the soil. Okay, and then let your tank go. And even then, you're going to get ammonia, a large ammonia spike. Okay, that will go away in a week. All right, but if you want to, if you're worried, if you're seeing plants having ammonia burn, I'll go ahead and do water changes. Do like 50% water, a couple, couple of 50% water changes within like say a week, week and a half, uh, and you'll be okay. But you should be okay. It really depends. Some plants are really sensitive to too much ammonia. They'll get what's called ammonia burn. Okay, you'll know because it'll start looking like, uh, uh, like, like brown, like they're getting burnt. Okay, I think that's the best way to put it. I right, don't mistake that for just die back either. Okay, if you're putting new plants in it and it's been grown immersed, you're putting it into a water environment to grow submersed, then you'll get die back. So it's kind of hard. You got to kind of figure out what it is. Ammonia burn looks like it kind of being burnt in a way. Okay, it, it'll it'll be dark. The leaves will get kind of dark. Okay, so if you see that, do water changes. But it should recover if you do it fast enough. Uh, which would happen to my office tank. I couldn't figure out why suddenly three or four days later my Java ferns, Java ferns started dying. It started withering back up brown. I'm like, whoa, what just happened here? And then I'm like, all right, let's check the ammonia levels. Whew, way high. And I, I did the drain and, and flood, drain and flood on that. And I not entirely sure. Maybe I just put too much soil. On the substrate on the office tank, it is a 75 gallon tank, so I had I had to use a lot of a lot of soil, so that it could have been what happened. But some of the java ferns didn't burn; it's still it's starting to grow strong now, and the ones that did get burned, it's starting to recover slowly, but it's starting to recover. It's a low light tank, so. Let's see. Um Where am I? What was I just? Saying? I am so for, so forgetful. All right, Lum I remember Lumpy Dog was in the house. I remember Famous Jones talking about Koval LEDs. Oh, and I started about talking about the coverage. Jason USCG. Okay, there we go. Ah, sorry guys, trying to catch up with everything here. And in theory, you can keep a small bio load of fish in one plant. All right, here we go. I think um, Yeah, Philly Man Pete. Yeah, that's kind of like the Diane Walsh time method. He's saying in theory you can keep a small bio load of fish in a well planted aquarium with zero filtration. The plants will be with the filter. You just need some circulation though. Yeah, that's that's the nature's aquarium way of how you, how Diane Walsh does it. You can completely heavily, completely heavily plant in your tank uh, using soil or whatever and just let its own ecology take care of the filtration. I personally never... I gotta try it one day, but that it, it makes me a little nervous not having a filter in the tank. You're just so used to, you know, having it beat in your head that you need a filter, you need a filter, you need a filter. Your fish are gonna die. You know, it, it's really hard to try to get away from that. Keith Bordley, is there a way to figure out if a combo light inside the tank is going to be high or low? Uh, not if unless you have a power meter, 
and a part meter costs like three hundred, four hundred dollars. I want to get one because I want to start doing lighting reviews and and make a chart of um, you know each light that or try to get as many lights out there and test them and so I can post out the post the par ratings and stuff. But it's three hundred, four hundred dollars. Maybe I could do a fundraiser or something. Uh, John Bears Fish Room, my vows are going crazy. So are the sad, so are the swords. Congratulations. So banana plants, of course. My Java friend died though. Wonder why. Did you leave your Java fern down for a long time? Did you move them around a lot? Is the rhizome is it just the leaves dead? Is the rhizome still alive? If the rhizome's still alive, it's still, it's gonna grow back. Don't throw them away. Okay? Java fern has a weird thing and it happens to me actually often. Is that when I'm moving them around, like if I'm taking them from here like I did them from here to my office which is about 15 minute drive and I was setting up the tank so it took another couple hours or whatever maybe I didn't you know keep them moist long enough or anything like that but that's part of the reason why they also died died back and then they're starting to grow back now for some reason I think for me in my experience Java friend doesn't like to be moved too much it doesn't like to be out of water too much I don't know if that's the right because I think they grow immersed too. Um, but I, I don't think they just like moving. Amazon swords don't like being moved. They hate that. They will throw a fit if you move your Amazon swords. At least in my experience, all my Amazon swords, like, if I move them, they're like, I'm not going to grow for like a whole week because you're a dick. You move me. So. Oh, sorry for my language. Uh, if you want some cheat lights super bright, check out Aqua Neat. CMPI82 says, uh, our Bretts recommended them to me and I love them. I got five of them so far and I plan to get more. I'll check them out. Aqua Neat? Is that one of, is that one of those really like you no know, cheaper light sets or whatever? I'll check them out. Um, let's see. Where are we at? Oh. Marky0306. Hey, thank you. Thank you. He says he loves my channel. Awesome to hear. I like hearing that. Hey, D. Down the wormhole is in the house. D so awesome. I love her. Um, She's really, really sweet. And her, so is her kid. Her kid's really sweet, too. And she got really cute, cute uh, birds. <laughs> Oh, you dry started your first... Okay, so you cheated. That's what I call cheating. That's uh, what I tell I, I tell my friends. I'm like, yeah, I teach people how to cheat in growing plants, carpeting plants. Because dry chart method really is cheating. I mean, when you understand it and you get used to how to do it, it literally is cheating. So much easier than growing them in water. Famous... You actually do that? Isn't that a pain in the butt? He's saying that he gets good, he gets light coverage by shifting light from one side to the other every week. I would find that annoyingly, just annoying. Not annoying me, annoying. It's just annoying to me. Having to remember to shift your lights back and forth. I mean, I got so much already to remember, so remember to shift light back and forth. Oh, what a pain. Um, someone else. Uh... Two big watches, but don't do well. You can do it in one day. I mean, you don't have fish in it anyways, right? And it. See, here's the thing: leave you want you don't want to completely kill the ammonia anyways, right? You're cycling the tank. I'm taking it, so that ammonia it's going to help you with your cycling. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to put ammonia. In, you don't have to put live fish to you know make the ammonia. You already have ammonia, so that's well, that's why I like doing dirt substrate. Is that it's already giving me the ammonia to to cycle the tank. So it's it's already it's already there. You don't have to worry about you know doing anything to cycle the tank. So don't try to get rid of it completely. Just try to lower it a little. Right? Only only if you're seeing burn on your tank on your plants. Okay? If not, don't worry about it. Just let it go. It'll go away. It'll start going down in a couple a week, couple of weeks. Uh, CMPI, no, I did not see that question about swapping out substrates. Ask it again. 
Hi, you haven't told us about your favorite fish. Thanks. All right, assuming that Sparks talking to me. Um, favorite fish would be discus. I love discus, um, but um, I mean as a whole. But I love my quarry cats. I love my pandas. I love my um, surbis, my julei eyes. Uh, I'm just really fascinated just sitting here watching uh, my quarries do the thing on, on the on the bottom of the tank. They're really really cool fish. Um, if you're talking about big fishes, arowanas. I love arowana. I used to have one. It grew that big until. You got depressed, committed suicide, jumped out of the tank, broke the glass top and everything. Um, they're powerful fish. If you watch Joey's channel and he's you see his arowana, the big ones. I mean, and then his old buddy who died. Uh, I wasn't surprised that happened. Not because of what Joey did, but because that is a strong fish. I mean, literally crazy strong fish. I mean, my, my arowana was that big before. It was uh, like our mascot. You know, I had a... I had a game room. We we used to play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, um, and my mom gave us money to build turn my garage into a game room. So in that game room we had the dragonfish, which is the arowana. We had an aquarium there, and we would sit there watch it every day and uh, feed it. They love it when I feed them guppies and whatever. Um, but then it got it, we got, I got him when he was that small, and then when he got about that big, about eight inches, he took a dive. He broke the glass. I mean, literally the glass top, and and just it was crazy. We didn't even know. I was like, "Where the hell is the fish?" We walked in and we're like, "Where's the fish? Why is the glass broken?" And there he was, just be between the wall and, and the, uh, the tank cabinet. It was a sad day. We mourned. We flushed him. We said a few words. <sighs> Cry, tear. Okay. Uh, John Bear's Fish Room. Can you dry start something like Tears or Java Moss? Then transplant it? Yeah. I It's going to be a mess tra transplanting Tears or Java Moss. But yeah, you can. See, the problem is, is when you do Tears or Java Moss and you're dry starting them, they're already growing into the substrate. Alright? Uh, the Java Moss is growing on whatever you, you're making it grow on. If you're making it grow on, like, plates, uh, mesh, then that'll work definitely. Uh, when I did my Java moss, I I was I, I put them on on rocks, uh, and it grew on the rocks. So there was no way if I did it, I would have to tear it up, tear it off the rocks and transport it. Uh, baby tears, I guess you could like grow them in little containers that way, and then transport it that way. That will work. Uh. I wish there was a way I could mark the questions I already answered. I was going to say try it in a sideways jar, then slide it out and into a bigger tank. A sideways jar? What's a sideways jar? My thoughts on the airstone in a tank? If you need it, it's good. All right, Famous Jones asking, what are your thoughts on airstone in a tank? Um, if you need it. If your fish needs it, some fish needs airstones. Okay, so you're going to have to put one in. I don't put air stones in my tank because I don't want to uh, cause too much surface agitation and, and lose my CO2 because most of my tanks are planted. All my tanks are planted. Okay, I don't want to lose my reputation here and say, and say that I have a non-planted tank unless it's salt water. They have an excuse to not have a planted tank. But, uh, yeah, uh, air stones in the tank, yeah, it works fine. Um, especially if the power goes out, you're going to have to put airstone to keep your fish alive even in a planted tank so there's nothing wrong with the airstone in the tank on the as as a planted tank guy i won't use them because i don't want that surface ag too much surface agitation just enough surface agitation from the outtake of my filter is good enough but too much surface agitation is going to cause too much uh o2 to go in my tank and i need my co2 to grow my plants how many serpent tetras can you add in a 10 gallon tank I'd go with five, maybe six in a 10-gallon tank. That's it. I don't know what else you're going to put in there. But five or six is good. All right. Uh, if you have really excellent filtration, a lot of plants, I might go with 10. Well, I probably would. I would probably go with 10, assuming I'm not putting anything else in the tank. Because uh, I would usually heavily plant the, the tank, and I always over-filter my tanks. 
Okay, so this tank's over-filtered. My 10 gallons are over-filtered because I'm putting a more powerful pump into the, the canister filters that I have. Um, for my 40 gallon, I bought a filter that um, that is a little more powerful than it needs to be for the 40 gallon tank. I always over -fill the tank because I have a tendency, if I get fish, usually, I will overstock. Only because I'm already planting it, planting planted the tank so um, there's filter right there and I have my own you know oversized filter over filtering with the filter itself so that allows me to be have more freedom about what I'm going to put in my tank livestock wise okay and I keep up with my water changes so my tanks are always healthy unless I let them die which I know some of you guys know I, I, I that happened already um, but yeah I over filter my tanks uh okay Susan have a nice one I, I know you probably gone by now uh oh hold on here guys I see BJ in the room but this thing Oh my gosh, guys! All right, hold on here. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to your questions soon. Apparently, you guys, the chat kept going while I was talking. All right, John Fishbear says I'll check the rhizome. Thank you. They are wood, and I didn't move them. Okay, just check the rhizome. If they're still healthy, then you're good. They'll they'll just regrow. Uh, you're talking about your job returns. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Talking a lot. Um, Famous Jones, laugh a lot. I'm new to the hobby. I enjoy everything I do with my tanks. I do bucket water changes on my 55 gallon. Maybe in a year or two I'll get bored with some, with something. Year or two I'll get bored with something. It happens. I change my tanks around a lot. I mean, it's considered a lot uh, for most people. Because like this one, I had it for about a year as a Dutch. And I let it go because of work, got busy and stuff. And instead of restarting, I decided to do a low tech. Kind of. I went back to high tech. Low tech, kind of went back to high tech. Uh, and then I'm going to go with a Dutch on the 40 gallon tank, which originally started as a uh, uh, just a planted tank with, uh, with good lighting, good setup, and everything. So I'm going to turn that more into a Dutch, back to a Dutch tank because I miss doing that. I got to reboot my Uwe Gumi. So I'm going to do that kind of at the same time, mainly to do a lot more videos, I guess. It's good that people like to watch that, so I'll be doing that. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to live stream me setting up a, uh, the Iwagumi uh, dry start with soil So and, and live, live stream that. I don't know if you guys would be interested in that. Uh, I'll live stream and record at the same time so I can edit it after. So. Uh, Bridget, welcome. Bridget Showman. I love Bridget because I was uh, make, not making fun of her name, but I was like, is that your real name? That's such a cool real name. Uh, that was some, one of my comments on my videos. But the first thing that stood out was Showman. Her name's Showman. That is so cool. Do you have any lights you recommend that could grow carpet? You use Phoenix, don't you? Do you like it? I see tons of lights everywhere I go, but I have no idea how, to tell much, how much light they provide. All right, Bridget. I use Phoenix uh, Planet Pluses. I use Fluval 2.0s, which 3.0 is out now. Fluval 3.0, fresh and planted. Okay, that's what the lighting is called. That has a lot of light. But the question is, how big of a tank are you talking? How high is your tank? Okay, we have to look at that. How high, how wide, and stuff like that. I can tell you exactly what to get and uh, how many you might need. So just let me know. Okay, CMPI. I bought three flag, three bags of Fluval Stratum, eight pounds. Okay, I plan to replace the 88 Amazona for my 20 high. It's been going since 2012. Any tips? Just swap them out. Uh, the Amazonia by now is the nutrients is it's, it's pretty much 
dead um, uh, dead um, aqua soil right now. So the only way it, what it's doing now is just becoming another fluval stratum for you. Okay, it's just clay substrate that will hold nutrients by a CC value to feed your root plants. Okay, if you watch my videos, you'll notice I mentioned CC values. Um, the stratum has a better CC value from what I've seen. The fluval stratum has way better CC value than Amazonia, ADA Amazonia. And since the Amazonia has already been, what, 2012, uh, it's pretty old. You might want to swap it out. I don't know if it's broken down on you yet. I don't know if it's um, very sandy to you now. Um, but might as well swap it out if you already got the fluval stratum. Now, fluval stratum is not supercharged nutrient-rich substrate like ADA aqua soil is, okay? But it has good CC value. It has the micronutrients in it. So when you switch out the substrate, just do it regularly like you would do anything else. Uh, make sure you start dosing your water column. And then that fluval stratum will take all the nutrients from that water column and store it into uh, the, uh, the, the substrate, the gravel. Um... Hi, Life with Fish. Welcome to the chat. I know I'm way behind right now, so I'll, I'll get to talking to you guys soon. Uh, oh, Famous Joan, you're computer tech. Uh, I feel ya. Same one here, too. I, I hate it, though. I just want to do YouTube videos all day. How about that? Ah, oh, congratulations on your guppies having baby, John Fish Bear. John Bear Fish Room. Bye. Life with oh you revealed your face tonight interesting I go look now see if that sexy accent goes with that sexy face of yours woohoo that was so cheesy never mind all right let's see we flushed him and said a few words ouch well I don't know how else can you say it I mean they were all pretty upset that was our mascot you know. You have the Cobra system doing your water changes. Hmm, I gotta check that out. Swart, Swart Wood Art Wood, welcome to the chat. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying several carpet plants, just seeing which one takes. Good, go for it, man. It's all about experimenting. Um, you'll find some that grows way easier than the others, and some of the ones that people say are hard to grow is going to be easy for you to grow for some reason, and the one that People say it's easy to grow. It's going to be hard for you to grow some reason. That always happens. Hey, Big J Aquatics. Nice to see you on board. Sideways jar laid on the side. Oh, you can try. That would be interesting. Do uh, do an uh, experiment. Let us know how it goes. You got a YouTube channel? Do it. Be something good to watch. Greg Sims says something about mesh, but I'm not entirely sure what you're relating it to. I'm so lost right now, so. I've... Cobra like Python? Is that what you guys are talking about? Or are you just calling it Cobra because you like the word better than Python? I am sorry guys, we're getting lost here. So I'm trying to catch all the questions that you guys have. Hey Flynn, welcome to the chat. Sorry I missed you. I'm still trying to scroll on all these questions. One of the most common plant, uh, plants I use in my tank, Famous Jones. I'm assuming you're asking me. So, um, it depends. Low low tech tanks, you're always going to see one of my favorite swords, Amazon swords. Uh, 
I want, you know, one of the reasons why I want to get my big tank sub because I want a mother Amazon plant. I mean, mother, this thing would be huge. It's the mother plant. That's what they call it, the mother plant. They're huge. Um, but yeah, uh, low tech. You see the job first, you see the Nubius, you see your regular Nubius, crypto chlorines. Those are really my favorite low light tanks, uh, plants for low light tanks. Now, when I do something highlighted, you see, uh, different. They're always going to be different. Um, but I do have my favorites. My favorites would be sour repens. Well, that's low light plant, uh, plant too. But I love them when they you grow them in a high lighted tank, uh, because you can grow a really nice carpet with it. My favorite AC is one of my favorites for carpeting plants. Um, we go mid ground plants. Blixas. Oh, I love Blixas. Uh, I love the way they grow. ARs are always great. AR minis. Super red. Uh, Luigias are my favorites. Uh, stem plants. Uh, oh, lympho. Uh, lympho. Lympho. Whatever. Lympho. Uh, aromatica. Lympho something. I, I'm always confused it with. <coughs> <coughs> Lymphomania. <coughs> I don't know. Uh, it's nympho something, uh, lymphatica or something like that, aromatic or something. I love them, they're my favorite. Labelia is really good if it's grown in burst, because it has this wonderful purple hue to it. But that disappears when you start going in in water, which sucks. So I'm going to start scrolling here. If I miss a question, go ahead and ask again. No, no worries about that. Sorry, I have to make you ask again, because... The chat is going quite quick. I tell them 10 gallon, but I like to do a 20 gallon long. Well, 20 gallon long, and I'm assuming this is from your lighting question. <coughs> well, high lighting uh, to grow like, you know, good carpet, really high demand plants, then go with the Phoenix Planet Plus. Always your best bet. And uh, again, um, see, all you need is one. Uh, I would get rises for it, and if you dig through my videos, I do a review on the Phoenix risers. But if you buy the new Phoenix Planet Plus, I believe they have their own risers now. So I think they worked out that problem. Uh, the other light I suggest is the Fluvo 3.0. Um, tons of highlighting. I have the 2.0s. Uh, I heard the 3.0s are much better. So that's good highlighting. You always should only need one of those because that has a wider range than the Phoenix, um, wider cone or, 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 uh, coverage. There you go. Uh, so you should be go good with the 20 gallon long there for your 10 gallon. Uh, you, you can go with Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix planet plus on the 10 gallon, uh, 10 gallons way easier to do because it's such a small in, in, inclined space. So, um, for highlighted plants, yeah, Phoenix planet plus is probably your best bet. Um, Better, better on the cost too. You can always get a flood. You know those flood LED flood lamps um, that you use in the driveway or in your garden stuff. You could try that for a ten gallon. Yeah, pick one up. Um, I wish I did a review on it. I think Joey did a review on it, so you can dig through his videos. Um, but you take the flood lamps, daylight flood lamps, and it costs like thirty bucks, and you just over like for a 10 gallon tank it's going to like over kill it's going to go overkill on lighting with that so you're going to have to raise it up but that's a good very good cheap way to get lighting for high high plants high lighted demanding plants yeah you know what i have a whole python system unfortunately my sink doesn't have the I couldn't find an adapter for this thing, so I can't hook it up. So I have to use my buckets for right now. I'm tempted to just go buy a whole new faucet and replace that. Make sure it has the you know the hook, the screw. Unfortunately, uh, it's just a rented place, so I don't know, I don't know if I want to spend money on on the place itself. Uh. I'm using Floor Max without dirt grab. Yeah, it's good. Um, just make sure you dose your water column. You're gonna need to dose your water column for Floor Max so that it could 
use that uh, nutrients from from the water column. That's right, you're Irish. I remember life with fish. I think yeah, they were talking about it in one of the live chats I was in. They, they were talking about your accent. Oh, in uh, Susan's live chat when they were doing the girls' night out thing. I spent nine dry start weeks creating a nice DHG carpet with Monte Carlo hanging from a rock. Nice. Then I made a mistake of adding rosy barbs in the tank. <laughs> oh no. They ate your 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 uh, Monte Carlo, didn't you? Every, uh, any advice for preserving your poor plants? Remove, get rid of the rosy barb, sell it, whatever. Get different fish, because they'll they'll eat Monte Carlo. I know that they'll eat Monte Carlo. Those those type of plants, because it happened to me before. Uh, not the rosy barb. I think tiger barbs were eating my plants. Not not the big plants, but the the little carpet plants like Monte Carlo. Um. Oh, I lost my place. Great. I really hate the scrolling on this chat. Okay. Um. Oh, okay, you were calling Cobra because you thought it was Cobra. Okay. I, I didn't want to make fun of you or anything. I mean, I didn't want to, you know, assume that, you know, you were just calling it Cobra because you didn't know. I thought there was actually a Cobra system out there. I thought someone was like, hey, if they made Python, we'll call ours Cobra. That'd be kind of a jab right there. Aquion one. Does the Aquion uh, one work very really well? I've seen it, but I've never... Um, I don't think we, oh, you have a I saw that on your channel. That's right. That's a pretty snake you got there. You know, I don't know. This is a fish channel, but... I was going to, you know, take my camera to my friend. So he, he's all in the reptiles. He used to, like, um, import and export them. Uh, but he's got a lot of cool uh, snakes at his place. So I wanted to like film. Do a dirt tank, man. I'm telling you, it is easy. Yeah, thank you, Ramel. Nephophilia. Lymphophilia. So I have uh, Crypt Wendetti, Pink Panther, Crypt Wendetti, Real Green Hybrid, Lugia Reppin Super Red. I love Lugia. I love the Reppin Super Reds. It's so pretty. Mini Pelias, nice, and more dwarf grass. Dwarf hair grass. I hate dwarf hair grass. And one more dwarf hair grass, I got like tons. It's growing in all my tanks. Because it, it just, you, you think you pull them out, no, they just come back. I hate those things. Uh, going through chat, make sure I didn't miss any questions. Monte Carlo needs medium light. You might get away with low light, but it does really well in medium to high light. The Mo Monte Carlo should grow in low light. It's just really, really slow. Uh, Bao Mechanis, Mechanis, you post the question. I spent a lot of time developing a DSM Aquascape, but I had a rosy barb, but I didn't realize. Oh, right. I already answered that. I told you, you just got to get rid of those rosy barbs. Or replant your tank. With different plants, uh, or just create a whole new tank, do it again, and um, and just get different fish, or get a new tank, put the fish in there. There you go, get new fish for the tank that's not going to eat up your uh, Monte Carlo. Well, I use buckets still, but I don't have a long way to walk in my buckets. Thanks, John Bear, I got it. Hey, John Bear. I am going to make you a mod, buddy. I think you'll make a good mod. If I can find it. Boom. 
Welcome, John Fish. You are now a moderator. Welcome to the team. Okay, uh, no plan for Rosie Barb to make no. Yeah, no Rosie Barb. Well, depends. They'll, they'll eat the little frizzly stuff. Yeah, I'll make a Cobra uh, uh, water changing system. Oh, you know what, Bridget? You just gave me a great idea. Oh, okay. All right, you gotta. I think you'll like it. I won't let you know yet. I mean, I'm working on the video right now, but it's the it's another uh, life of the of an Aquarius video. So, if you guys want to see snakes, I'll put snakes in there. Well, life with fish, you have a snake, so of course you'd be interested in seeing it. But you know, I'll just do an off off you know topic video. Why not? Yeah, you know, some people have a hard time with dwarf baby tears, and I don't understand why. It could be maybe the water parameters. I don't have a problem with it. They grow extremely well with me. But a lot of people I know that kind of has pretty much the same parameters, same setup and everything, uh, have a problem growing dwarf baby tears. So I'm wondering, maybe it's something with the water, you know, the hardness or something. Um, so, yes, I want to see that pond build live with fish, because I'm planning to do, not a pond, but in my patio, put you know uh, uh, one of those tubs, uh, like those, um, uh, you know the tubs that everyone talk about. Make a tub, a nice little tub, like the waterfall and everything. So, yeah. Great sense. Yeah, water top off system. Yeah, it's called filling a bucket and just pouring into my tank. <laughs> I mean that's my top off uh, water system. I don't usually need it really because I put a, I I have a cover on this tank. The tanks I don't have a cover with. I just fill it up every... Actually, I just fill it up every time I have to film something. Literally. Because when I start to film, it's about in between two days, maybe three days. Then I'll, I'll hear the water coming, you know, coming out of the... You start hearing the water splashing. That's when I know, oh, I need to fill it up. And I need to fill it up anyways because I don't want water splashing uh, to be heard on my videos. Right? So, um, that's how I know. That's my water topping, uh, topping off system. If I hear it and I'm about to film, I better fill it up. Harkin Rods boards, I love those. Harkin Rods boards are really cool. I like them. Yeah, they are. You need the water. Well, you know, some, I say you need highlighting, but some people have been telling me that they have been growing it with low light, so I don't know how they're doing it. Or maybe it's just... They just stuck it in there and they haven't died off yet. I don't know. I know someone here on the chat was saying that he is growing dwarf baby tears in low light. Uh, let's just speak up if it's you so we can point at you. Uh, yeah, I have an idea. I want to share not yet. Because it's one of those silly ideas. I'm, I'm going to make it. Make it. I don't know if I'm going to release it. Because see... Here's the problem with comedy, right? Like like I did my uh, 23 phases of water change. Um, it doesn't, you know, it's comedy, so it doesn't fit everyone. And I have a really weird, weird sense of humor. And this happens a lot on my Wargaming channel. Um, basically, I used to do, uh, okay, on my Wargaming channel, I teach painting, miniature painting. Okay, with airbrushes and regular brushes. So that's my thing on my uh, you know wargaming channel. So that's what I'm mainly known for. So I did this whole video called Zen Wargaming, okay, and it's me dressed up playing a character called Master Chung, and he's a ridiculous, like, outrageous, like, out of this world, stereotypical, uh, thing of a kung fu movie master teaching you how to paint miniatures, okay. So that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, look, I did it for scale modeling on my scale modeling channel. Again, another channel I have, which I taught people how to paint scale models, you know, scaling paint planes and, and, and boats and, and cars and stuff. Then I switched over to miniature painting. But it, those two matched because I was teaching them how to paint bigger, you know, big models, and then I taught them how to paint little figures. So I started Master Chung with a video on scale modeling, and then... I jumped up when I did my Wargaming. I did a Master Chung video on that one too. So I want to do, in one of the episodes of Life of an Aquarius, 
I'm going to do master chunk. So that idea that you had, Bridget, was was one 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 thing. Though I I can't tell you. I'll I'll let you know. So, but the problem is I don't know how well it'll do. Again, comedy. You never know how it works. So, but that's just sneak peek. I didn't keep all all of it to myself. So I gave you that. Well, good. I'm glad I made you giggle. I try to keep people giggling. Wait, can't wait to see my. I don't have a pawn, and my tub is not going to be considered a pawn. It's not going to be a pawn. I think maybe you're talking to someone else. And uh, that is, uh, uh, life with fish. I'm talking to you. How to keep your water tank water temperature down during hot summer days? Oh, see, this is. I have a problem with this. Uh, uh, mainly with tanks being. See, I live in a two-story townhouse. Downstairs in the summer is cool, okay? It's cool, and I don't have to worry about it. Upstairs, there's and then years ago when I was into this, and my girlfriend at the time had her tank, and I had tank upstairs, and she kept it in, in her desk with a cubby hole, which I told her not to do because first of all, it gets hot up there, and um, and second, she had it in the cubby cubby hole, so there was no air going in and out. And well, one day it got so hot that. You know, her stir died and a bunch of other fish died in her tank. She was so upset because she loved those stir uh the stir stir-by uh, cats. But, see, that's my problem with upstairs. And I have, um, uh, when it gets on hot days, um, we used to just put ice in the tank. That's the best we could do. Or blow fan. Or use a fan to blow the top of the water. We'll, we'll keep the lid off and blow the top of the water with a fan. And that usually cools it down by a couple of um, uh, degrees. Now they also have these things where you can buy where you can clip the fan on your uh, rim. Okay, and they'll blow uh, it's just little fans and it'll blow in into the top of your uh, uh, surface of your water and that will cool down your tank by a few degrees. So you should look at those. Those are actually pretty cheap too. If you, if you can't afford it which I don't know why you couldn't because it is cheap uh, just use a regular, use a box fan and just point it at your tank, blow it at the top of your surface of your tank, and that's one way to keep a uh, couple of degrees down on your tank. Uh, evening, everyone. Someone said evening. Uh, sorry, wait a Matt Botany Organic Farms LLC. Hi. Wow, that is a, that's a mouthful for your uh, username there. Uh, life with pets, life with fish. Wrong person. Life with pets, someone else, right? If I remember correctly. Oh, so that's why you buy so much fish. That's cool. They only mark up one dollar for what they. That's that's pretty affordable, man. Hey, fish man. By the way, nice to see you on chat. I know I didn't say hi to you. Is this stuff still choppy, guys? <coughs> what fertilizers do you use and <coughs> what regimen? I use EI dosing. I, I mainly use dry fruits. Um, let me grab that. So mainly dry fruits. Um, this is a, a, C, a CSM plus B mix. This is an all-in-one fruit. I would mix um, mix this with water, and then I would just dose it like like a liquid fertilizer. It's so much cheaper than buying all-in-one <coughs> <coughs> all-in-one uh, fertilizers. Take a quarter of a cup of this and mix it with. Uh, I think a cup, uh, 500 milliliters of water, and then you got yourself a mix. So this could last. This could make about six bottles, I think, and it was 20 bucks. All right. So that's uh, one for like. I don't. I stopped using this, but I got to mix new batch because I'm gonna start using it on the tank behind me. 
Okay, but normally I EI dose the hard, the hard uh, demanding, um, hard demanding uh, tanks, like the Dutch tank I did. Um, I would dose the potassium nitrates, uh, monopotassium phosphate, right, and uh, potassium sulfate. And then uh, there's a schedule that I would dose every day. <coughs> and then come Sunday, dose every day. I think Saturday is the rest day. And then when it comes Sunday, I do a 50% water change. And I start the cycle all over. That's that's pretty much uh, high high impact, high dosing, uh, EI dosing, I guess. Because there's different ways. I don't know if you guys still hear me. There's different ways to uh, kind of EI dose, that, but that's the method I use. And of course, I have other fertilizers, iron uh, and uh, calcium and all that stuff. Whatever I need to supplement uh, whatever my plants need. And I buy all that at aquariumfertilizers.com. Yeah, I'm going to try to build a waterfall with that tub. So I'll see how it comes out. Yeah, sorry if I, about it being a little child. I'm going to start doing my live stream upstairs until I fix this stupid laptop. <coughs> you mean I have a summer? What do you mean? It's usually hot and humid in NYC during the summers. Hey, Alpha Aquariums, buddy. How you doing? Hey Jenna, good to see you. Hey Gabriel, and MTS is definitely catching. Oh wow, did I get all the way down to the bottom of the chat? Well, I never thought I would do that. Well, that's another good idea, assuming that you can do it, depending on the what, what you keep in your tank. Uh, CMPI, CMPI 82 suggests that you turn up your tank temperature during the summer so the tank doesn't fluctuate too much, which is a good idea, assuming that you can do it with whatever you're keeping. Oh, well, not that big of a waterfall life with fish. I'm, I'm talking about a little waterfall, not... Not like Niagara Falls in my backyard kind of thing. I have a little patio. How the hell am I going to make that big of a waterfall? Come on, girl. Only LFS is a pond store? Well, pond store will work too, I guess. How can you not have any local fish store? How do you guys get your fish and stuff, John Bear? Alright, Bridget. Keep your eyes open for Master Chung. I'm just coming up with ideas for it. It's true. I mean, after a while, you're going to have MTS. I don't know how you could stop for You either get a fish tank and admire it, and it's just another decoration in your house, or you get a fish tank, you get hooked on it, and you realize there's so much more out there, and you're just, you know, tank after tank after tank after tank, you know? Oh, wow, I've been going for an hour and 20 minutes now, guys. You're sitting here watching me being all choppy and Max Hedro me. But um, I'm glad this chat's going good. I'm glad I got all these questions, guys. So uh, let's let's get more questions in before I go. I'll go ahead and uh, go for another five minutes, maybe ten minutes. So if you got questions, ask, ask them now. You want to super chat me? That's cool, too. My Monte Carlo is turning transparent. What should I do? Uh, it's dying back. Do you know why it's dying back? Did you just plant it? Did you just like grow it and immerse and put it in water? Um, do you have enough lighting? What kind of substrate do you have? Are you dosing a water column? I need more details. Because turning transparent means it's dying back, so we gotta figure out why it's dying back. Yeah, 
Yeah, I just hope those plastic cubes don't crack in your fish tank. That stuff inside is not going to be good for the fish. So yeah, going back on um, the pot, well, not pond, the tub thing. Um, I was uh, watching you know, a lot of videos and they're talking about using tubs as ponds. I think they're the like black plastic things. Uh, I want to build a nice, you know, wooden tub around, uh, wooden frame around the tub, so it look nice, and then kind of have um, the water pushed up to another, another, another level where there's plants, and the plants are going to just fill, filter up all, help filter out the water, and just going to come to a waterfall and then fall down, a small waterfall, not Niagara Falls waterfall. And then come down into uh, back into the uh, tank itself. <laughs> to anyone using CO2 and a canister filter, I would highly you recommend using a CO2 reactor. I used one on my 20. Took it took about one third of the CO2 versus a diffuser. Yeah, I I agree. Actually, I use an inline diffuser. I find that works way better than a reactor. I had a reactor on here, which if you watch my video on this build when it was a Dutch tank, I couldn't get it working. I just didn't have enough flow, I think, was the thing. And honestly, that, that reactor, which I have the Insta reactor, I don't know which one you have, CMPI82, um, it just didn't work all that well. I didn't like it. But then when I got a Greenleaf inline diffuser, and that worked tremendously well. And... um that's what I'm going to do with my 40 gallon uh, breeder Dutch style. I'm going to use the inline diffuser. I already have it, but I just haven't hooked it up yet. Uh, going to any movies this year? Should, yeah, I am going to Infinity Wars. I, I'm not missing Infinity Wars. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I'm a DC fan too, but come, when it comes to movies, Marvel's got it on top of DC. They're not, you know, I mean, sorry DC. I enjoyed, you know, Justice League. It was fun. I like what they did with it, most of what they did with it, but yeah, man, tops down. Marvel just kicks DC's butt. I, I I don't know if you agree with me or not. That's okay, but <clears throat> I'm a Marvel guy. Yes, finding the water box on Facebook. John Bear couldn't find it. Probably couldn't find the link. Just planted a Fluvo Spec uh, Five with a Phoenix Plant Plus LED. No ferts. Try dosing ferts. Are you running CO two? I take it no. Okay, um, if you're not doing CO2 and no first and just lighting with a Phoenix Planet Plus on a Fluvo Spec 5, then I would suggest you also watch out for algae blooms because uh, you're running. What else do you have planted in that tank? Uh, let's go there now. But you might want to fert a little maybe. What's your substrate? Hey, AC uh, Aquatics. I thought you were leaving for the evening. Why don't you say goodnight and then just come back all of a sudden? You're such a tease. It's the CO2 reactor. You can even use it with a power head. The problem with the inline diffuser makes your tank look sprite. I don't mind the look, the sprite looking thing. You know why? Because I actually see it working. That's why. Um, I had that. The Insta CO2 reactor. It's here somewhere. I don't know where. I, I might have thrown it away. I don't know. I hated that thing. Hated it. Um, I'm, I might try it where I'm going to make my own. I want to do do a do itself uh, CO two reactor, which is pretty really easy to make. Oh, Jessica, jo I love her. She's so awesome. The the person that plays Jessica Jones, um, she's really cool. But that's a really good series, Jessica Jones. Most of the Marvel, most of the Marvel series on Netflix is pretty good. Um, I suggest if you have not watched it yet, stay away from uh, what's that one. Oh, what's that stupid... I don't even remember because it was so horrible. Uh, I don't know. It's one of them. It's not, it's not Cage or whatever. It's the other one. The dorky guy. Oh, someone help me out here. Yeah, but you know, Marvel may, may make better movies, but DC makes better TV shows. Okay, Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Huge fan. I can't. I can't get enough of those shows. Agents of Shield, man, it goes up and down. I watch Agents of Shield because of Quake, uh, the girl that plays Quake. 
Because I think she's really, really pretty. Have I ever done Planet Shrimp Tank? No, not yet, Jay. And welcome to the chat. Uh, no, not yet, but I plan to. So it's going to be one of my tanks, a shrimp tank. Yeah, I, I like Jessica Jones. So hopefully you'll like it too. It was a pretty good one. Now, out of the the uh, series that they did when they made the um, the group, they made all the they made one series out of all those series together. That I think that was Jessica Jones, the best of those series that they have on Netflix. Uh, would you do one for a? Uh, you mean what live or you mean just in video? I I usually do. Any tanks I make, I will usually film it. So I will make a video out of it. Because mainly that's how I build my channel. That's how I get content for my uh, channels. But the problem is, is I can't do too many. I mean, it's going to run out of money. So I know I really need to do a Patreon or something. But the thing is, if I do a Patreon, I need to be able to add something extra, on, extra for my Patreon members. Yeah, make your own C2 react. That's what I'm planning to do. I'm going to try some things. Runaways or Stranger Things? Oh, I've not seen Runaways yet, but Stranger Things are, is awesome. I don't know how old you are, Bridget, but I love Stranger Things because um, that's my childhood. That's how. That's literally, literally, those kids was me, my me and my group of friends. Literally, I mean, we were nerds. We played Dungeons and Dragons and all that stuff. So yeah, Daredevil is good. Hey, Victor Gonzalez, welcome to chat. Daredevil was awesome. If you haven't seen that yet, Bridget, you might want to check that out. Okay, Floramax, Substrate, Pearl, Weed, Is any of your other plants dying other than your Monte Carlo? Because if your other plants are doing fine and it's only your Monte Carlo, it could be just your Monte Carlo trying to settle in. And it's just dying back and it'll regrow, hopefully. So just keep an eye on it. But if all your other plants are acting weird or dying back, it could be just, it could be something wrong there. But it doesn't sound like anything would go wrong other than you just planted the tank. So it's just, uh, tank. sometimes plants will take its time to uh, grow back in. You know, they might die out just to grow back in. That's just the way plants work. Iron Fist, that's it. That's what I was starting to think of, Famous Jones. Iron Fist was horrible. I couldn't, I couldn't even remember the name. Has anyone started watching DC's Black Lightning? I haven't started that yet, but I've been really itching to try to sit down and watch that. Yeah, DC Krypton. Has that started yet, CMPI? Because uh, I, I keep seeing uh, episodes of it, or, or, or um, advertisements of it. I, wa I want to check that out. Monostrum sees lots of uh, uh, algae. Bridget, order them from uh, Flip Aquatics. All right. Uh, can so John Barry, can you post Flip Aquatics uh, address if you can find it? Uh, Flip Aquatics have uh, Amano Shrimps, and they will eat pretty much all your algae. They're great algae eaters. Defenders, thank you, Famous Jones. Wow, you know all the... See, I can't think right now. I just finished with work and you know, jumped, ran home to do the live stream. Which... Shoot, which one just missed what you said? Which one what? Hey, take take it easy, Greg Sims. Uh yeah. CO two will make your plants grow lusher. Okay, that also includes sometimes bigger size in in in, in uh, leaf length uh, or size in leaf itself. So that's natural. You'll see uh, plants grow lusher, bigger with CO two if you're pumping in CO two. <laughs> That I noticed right away in all my tanks. Tanks I pump CO2 versus paint tanks I haven't pumped CO2. Black Lightning, was it good, Famous Jones? Um, you could do Echo Complete and then Black Diamond Sand. The problem is the Black Diamond Sand is going to slip all down your Echo Complete. And all you're going to have is a Echo Complete Sand Mix. Okay. Uh, so just keep bear that in mind. Um, what you want to do is put enough sand so that not all of it sinks down to the bottom of the Echo Complete. So I would put Echo Complete, put in the sand and mix it up until you got a good you know layer of it. 
and then start putting the sand on top as a, as kind of a cap. You bought Flourish and it sucks, but is that all you bought with Flourish? All right, Stevie Weavy Aquatics says, I, I bought Flourish and it sucks. Here, here's why. Flourish will not give you all new shades. Alright, and we want to get Flourish. We want to get a lot of it, a lot of bottles. That's the way. Okay, so you have Flourish. You have Flourish, right? Um, I'm assuming you have Flourish Trace or what? Just regular Flourish, so that would be Flourish Trace. So this is that. This will give you micronutrients. All right, and some ma macronutrients. All right, plants need micro and macronutrients, and as well as some other nutrients. But the main nu main nutrients you're going to give your plants is um, micronutrients, is this, and there's a bunch of nutrients that's considered micro, and then you need macronutrients, the three big ones: potassium, phosphorus, phosphates, and nitrogen. Okay, so to so you give your plants everything, you'll need the trace. The flourish trace, and you'll need these three. Okay, and then I also have iron to supplement iron if I ever need it because I used to grow a lot of red plants. Now I had all this, I bought all this to use, and I just basically said screw that, and I just went with dry fruits. So much cheaper, hundred times cheaper. Okay, and. Um, and since I was using it, yeah, I tried EI dosing with this stuff, with the index, EI estimated index um, method. Okay, I used so much of this stuff just to hit the marks. Okay, so this thing is diluted. The, all these flourish products, they're already diluted fertilization uh, first. So it didn't work for something like EI dosing. I mean, it will work, but you have to use a lot of it. Um, so what you end up, what you really should get, and not only make it really cheap, but uh, more concentrated is to get dry fertilizers, which I showed early on in this uh, chat. Thanks, Flip Aquatics. Yeah, if I was looking for shrimp, go to Flip Aquatics. He knows his stuff. He's a really nice guy, uh, and um, really does really good shipping. Okay, so only in Monte Carlo. So El Guru, most likely in Monte Carlo is just settling in, so it's gonna die back and grow back, hopefully. All right, that's the only thing to see. Just keep an eye out and see if anything else looks out of whack, okay? Um, but again, if you just planted plants in your tank, there is a very good chance that they will die back and regrow again. It's just nature of how it works, okay? So just keep an eye out on it. And if you have any more questions, you know where to ask. Yeah. Oh, I'm a total computer nerd, man. Your links keep breaking. Well, stop bringing your links, John Bear. Yeah, use a Mono Pro uh, 25. Get get a good discount on Flip Aquatics. Okay, I'll, I'll definitely check out Black Lightning then. I'll use Vital. Victor Gonzalez uses Vital for Mage Jewel plants. I gotta check that out. I haven't looked at but again. Since I started using dry fruits, I had no reason to use any other fertilizer, honestly. Because with the dry fruits, I could dose it individually. And I even have the dry fruits that makes the all-in-one uh, fertilizer. So, Yeah, so when it, someone comes up and says, Oh, I, I have the Flourish, um, Flourish bottle to dose my tank. And I'm like, well, which one? They're like, well, what do you mean which one? I, got the I go, okay. There's Flourish, there's Comprehensive, which junk. Don't don't buy that. Um, there's Potassium, Nitrogen, and I have to go through the whole thing that I just gave you guys about you need to buy all these other bottles. So it's just easier. All right? The only thing in Flourish that you might want to get is Excel. Have that on hand if you want to dose, you know, you know, liquid carbon into your tank to help your plants grow. Just remember that it does melt Java valve, uh, um, valve area, uh, jungle valve. 
Um, and also to keep it on hand to kill algae. That's the only thing I would suggest buying. Anything else then you should go do, do simple green. It's all great all in one until you're ready to start dosing um, individually, right? Because when you're dosing individually, then you have to measure out based on uh, your tank, based on your tank size, based on the method you're using. Uh, some methods depend on how much plants you have in your tank, such etc. So there's a lot of uh, dialing in when you're doing like uh, really advanced fertilization. Uh, growth do some Dustin's fish tank too. Yes, all in one. Do you have videos about your first? No, not yet, Bridget. Okay, so I did this whole Planet Tank series about last year ago. Oh no, yeah, a year ago, and that's doing really well. Well, that series is supposed to take you into a whole series about lighting, which I covered some of it here already in the live chat. Uh, CO2, a complete series on CO2, and a complete series on fertilizing fertilizers okay so look for those in the future I've been holding off on doing because I've been doing a little more research and, and, and mainly just look around because I want to figure out how I could bring it to you present it better to you guys in a video but I think I'm about ready to just jump into it I don't know if I should start with the lining one first or the co2 first the third one's gonna be the fertilizer I know that but everyone keeps jumping back for they're like do co2 do co2 or do uh, lightning, do lightning. So it's a mix. So I'll let you guys vote. Right now, right here, before I go, what do you want to see first? The lightning video series or the CO2 video series? You guys, right now, here and now, we're going to make history. Those in this chat, by the way, I hope you liked this, this video. I don't know. I can't check. Um, right now, those of you guys in the chat, do it. Do it. What should I do first? Lightning video first or CO2 video series first? Go. Oh, Bridget, you got to go. You're supposed to vote. Good going. I don't think this worked very well. Or either that it has a very long, long, um, long pause. Long delay. Hey, I have our shrimps on all my, my tanks, too. Excel, yeah, that's right. Excel might affect uh, your shrimp, so you have to be careful about using Excel. All right, we got one for CO2, one for CO2, another one for CO2. You can't vote for both, Bridget. You only vote for one. Lighting, light. Look at this. I'm telling you, see, this is why I had a problem figuring out which one to do first. So I have four CO2s, two lightings. All right, I'll take both, Bridget. Go, go get, go get rest. I'll talk to you later. It was nice talking to you. I'll count her as both. So, in other words, it's a no count vote, really. Okay, so four for CO two and two for lighting. Oh, interesting. AC Aquatics says lighting is the most important factor in planted tanks, and the easiest to control. Lighting. Hmm. Interesting. So, four for CO2, three for lighting. Bridget could have been the tiebreaker here, but she, no, she had to vote, vote for both. You, you can't vote twice, AC. I saw that. I saw what you did there. So, okay, we still have four CO2s and three lightings. Hey, Ben's. Hey, Benjamin13, welcome to the chat. We're doing a vote. Be Benjamin, which one would you rather see first? A series on lighting? A video series on lighting? Or a video series on CO2? Let me know what you want to see first. If you had the choice. <coughs> he might tie it up. Because CO2 looks like it's in the lead right now. Do I? There's no one stalking the, this live chat right now? Rock the vote. That's right. Rock the vote. Well, it looks like CO2 might have won, guys. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh, Benjamin. Oh, he's. Oh, I see what. Oh, we got another one for lighting. We are tied on lighting. We're tied on CO2. I don't know where you were at, UG. Maybe you were just kind of like stalking the the, the chat here. Oh, Ben just, Benjamin just broke the tie. We are going with lighting. So lighting first, guys. I'll work on that video series next then for you guys. Um, I'm looking maybe about... Maybe, I don't know. I was looking at eight parts on the lighting series, but I think you condense it down to like uh, four or five parts. It's not tied up. Benjamin broke the tie, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Oh, do a series on water. Oh, dang it. I have to write this down. Now you just gave me an idea of that video I was talking about that Bridget gave me an idea of. Now you gave me an idea. So, about that. <laughs> well, thank you for signing on to watch, uh, UG. You are awesome, my friend. Okay, so lighting wins. So we'll, I'll do lighting first. And then we'll go to CO2. And then we'll go to fertilizers. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll go and plan that out. See, in the lighting video, so since we're, well, we have this, everyone's on right now that I'm talking to. In the lighting video, I was, about, I was going to do a video on each type of lighting you use on the tank. But I don't know if I should go through all that. Right, because metal highlight is still a viable option. It's just no one uses that much anymore. I just might mention it, but not actually do a whole video on it. I want to do a whole video on LEDs and um, T5, uh, high, high output T5s. And I think that's about it that I would just do its own video. So that would cut down four or five extra videos I would need to do. Um, but I will mention everything else in, in its own, you know, in one one overall general video so that's what I had planned so I don't know if I should just concentrate on doing one video on lighting that no one really uses that much anymore I don't know what do you guys think uh, you tequila drink is kicking in that's alright man be nice to get some tequila I should have brought some tequila differences between red and blues yeah definitely going to mention that how about fish? Actually, fish. Um, that's gonna come later because I have. I'm always. All, I've also been working on a very begin, like your very first fish tank, like for all the newbies out there. So I started working on that series already too. I started filming that, and that series we're gonna talk about fish more. <coughs> but if you notice, I fish. I kind of like make second my secondary um, importance when I do fishing. Fish for me, fish tank right now is mostly about. Plants and I think when I get my reef tank up, it's all going to be about the corals rather than the livestock in the tank. The livestock kind of is the decorations for my plants or the decorations for my corals. That's the way I kind of think about. It. What kind of fire? What kind of fish do you stock with? It depends. Again, it depends on my aquascape. Um, when I had the Dutch tank here, I wanted rummy nose because they would look really good with the background. Of, of some of the, the mix of the green and the reds in, in the in the stem plants I had back there. And uh, it, it looked great. So uh, I like that. And then I always need some kind of quarry. I love my quarries. Um, Got to have always the shrimps. Got to have the monos. Okay. I, I'm very partial to monos because they live. They like, they're like indestructible. They live forever. I mean, I saw monos in that 10-gallon tank. I thought they all died. No. They're still around. I just don't know where they're coming from, but when I look, they're not there. Whatever. Um, what else do I like to stock? In? Oh, auto synclases are always my favorite um, for the algae for the algae cla uh, glass skinners. Autos. Love them autos. I love them when there's tons of them. Stevie is a rip. What's a rip off? That one's going to be tough. It's better, I think, explain. Um, the split, explain the par rating and what's considered high, low, a low, medium, high. And then I think, and then when I do plant profiling, because I think I'm going to do some plant profiling, in it, and I will point them back to that video saying, this is, this is how you figure high, low, high, 
medium uh, thing. But I, I could do a video on the lighting series about here's some popular plants and here's how they would fit on this chart. So yeah, I think that's another good video to make in that series itself. Good ideas, Famous Jones. Oh, thanks, AC. Um, definitely hopeful. I'm glad people will actually love that uh, Planet Tank series. The Dry Start Method is another popular video of mine right now, and that's really pushing. Both of these, the Planet Tank series and the Dry Start Method, is actually pushing my channel really quick. So, Hey, Famous Jones, have a good one, man. Thank you for joining us. I really enjoyed our, our, our chat. So it'll be really cool. Hey, John Baird, thank you. Thank you for the uh, super chat. There you go. For neat. I was wondering if anyone's going to super check because I want to see the thing pop up. That's so cool. What do I feed my autos? Um, Nothing, really. I mean, because I have more. Th see, I don't clean. I don't scrape the algae off the back glass. And you can't see it because it's black. So it, they have tons of... They're always all attached to the black uh, back of the glass um, munching on the algae there. But if I want to feed my autos when I don't have algae, I use algae wafers. No, eat that. So do the quarries, though. Um, if you want, drop cucumbers, slices of cucumbers. They'll munch on that too. <laughs> Veggie wish for try uh, then try um, cucumbers. See if that they'll eat on that. I never thought peas would work though. I'm surprised the algae wafers didn't work, but probably the the shrimps will eat up the algae wafers. That's for sure. Ooh, nice, a black box LED, nice. Also, LED Claus got a black box LED. Congrats, bro. And pearling, I love my when my plants pearl. That's crazy. White background is good. Um, I don't do complete white. If I did a white background, I would use a frosted film to do it so that I could shine any lights in the back and make it like... I would frost the frost the back with white bright frosting, bah, okay. And then I would use like say a red LED to simulate sunset sunrise, uh, that just to get that kind of effect on the, on my aquascape. Uh, but I wouldn't do complete white. Yeah. Yeah. So feeding your autos, uh, always leave the back glass uh, unscraped. Assuming assuming that you can't see the algae, depending on your, your backing, right? I mean, assuming, like, Benjamin's asking, what do you think of white backgrounds? I I won't do it unless it's a frosted glass background to make an effect. But normally I won't do it because you'll be able to see the algae. One of the reasons why I like the black background is it makes my aquascape stick out, as well as my fish, uh, most fish anyways. And uh, also, you can see the algae in the back of the glass, which I leave for my autos. So, really, that's interesting. You, I wish you had. Did you make videos? I don't think you do, right? <laughs> I would like to see that. It'll be really cool. Yeah, frosting on your tank. Use the uh, frost uh, backings. <laughs> Come on, John Bear, where you been, buddy? Frosting the back of your tank. Makes it nice and yummy and tastes yummy. Hey, Damien, welcome to the chat. Nice, Pismo Beach. Sounds like a fun dinner. That's an interesting... Uh, oh, you're talking about frosted tint. Okay. That's different. I thought you meant like complete white background, so... Uh, you feel the plants have been growing better with the reflection? Could be. Or it could just be making your plants look really nice. So. Hey, Sherry. Welcome to the chat. Glad I have a chat. You know, did I say, like, I was going to end this five minutes ago, like, 20, half an hour ago? 40 minutes ago? Wow, this is going really long. This has been a really good chat, guys, so that's why uh, I'm liking this. But super awesome. All right, but... I do have to call the five minute mark. So, if you guys have any last questions, we are going with the lighting video series. And uh, yeah, because you guys all voted on it. 
So if anyone's asked me, where's the CO2? You say we're going to do CO2. I said, well, i got to do lighting first. I'm going to blame on you guys because now I have it recorded. So it's all your fault. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, it's been awesome with you guys. Um, AJ Friends. I use plastic dip to paint the back of my... 40 breeder went black to high most of the yard. Yeah, that's why I like using black too. Ben, that's why you're here in LA, somewhere around in LA, right? Yeah, I haven't gotten a rainbow pen in a while, so I don't know. We gotta do a hookup, you know, or go to one of the uh, scape. I don't know if you're in scape, but one of the scape. Well, I think you are in scape, right? I'm not sure, but uh, one of the scape uh, events that'll be fun. Oh, you have Sherry. Okay. She haven't said anything. I see how it is. Don't talk us till the end. I see how it is. All right. Anyways, guys, it's been fun. I'm going to call it a good for tonight. I don't see any other questions, but I loved hanging around with you guys. We're gonna st I'm going to start trying to do this almost every Friday. So keep an eye out on it. I think I'll make this a schedule thing so you can expect it every Friday. It uh, looks like it's a good time to do our live my live chats. There's a lot of people around. So I will talk to you guys later. Thank you, John Bear, for moderating. Thank you. Uh, well, Susan's gone. But, uh, yeah. Join the Waterbox Facebook group, guys. Uh, talk to us there. I would like to get, you know, get more people, regulars on, so I could make a little, a couple more mods. I would like a couple more mods. I would like to see this thing get big, so you guys can help me do that. So, hey, thank Austin. Uh, you rock, man. Keep it up. Love the videos on light, CO2, nutrient balance. Thank you. You are very welcome, sir. Any other questions, just go ahead and message me. You know where to find me or leave a no comment in one of the videos. doesn't matter. CMPIA, no problem, man. love chatting with you guys. So have a good night, guys. I love you all, and I will talk at you guys later. Once I click stop on the stream. I wasn't ready for the goodbye. Okay, there. Stopping stream. Bye. Yes, I'm sure.